These monks never spoke, never spoke a word. Failed monkin, failed. Loser. Bad monk. It is the best condition for a monastery in the whole of Britain. Kept for the preservation of this beautiful floor. Kerry only knows Latin from horror movies. If you can spot the emoji. Is there an actual emoji? Uh, Medieval emoji. monk graffiti. We'll take you through that way in a little bit. Can you believe it? Crazy. Don't know what I was expecting to find in here, but thank you for coming with me. Hi. This is Kerry. And this is Kat. And, and we, we are tea, tea in Valhalla. Valhalla. And today we're at Cleve Abbey. Look at this place. Amazing. This is a 13th century monastery. And that inscription above the door is in ancient Latin. And it says, Gate be open. Shut to no honest person. And it won't be either because we're all going in. So let's go and have a look. So this little area, really close to the gatehouse, it's got sort of a upstairs downstairs feel to it sort of a side room is the almonry and it's where the uh, monks would feed the poor so it's where you would hand out food to the poor and the needy and the almonry could actually be reached from the inside and outside so if someone was inside you could reach the almonry so if you're inside the gatehouse you could reach it but even if you were outside uh, unable to come in for whatever reason you could also be fed if the gates were closed that vaulted roof. Beautiful. So this abbey is very special because it's one of the best preserved abbeys in Britain. So this was for the Sistine Order of Monks under Henry VIII, the early 15th century. It was obviously closed due to the dissolution of the church here in Britain. So we're using English Heritage membership today to get us in. And there was parking available just over the road as well. Again, Kat will put all the details down in the description for today's exploration and uh, tour. So be sure to check that out and give her a thumbs up as well. Stunning so far. We are actually in Somerset, very close to the Exmoor National Park. And you could tell, couldn't you? There was rolling hills on the way in. We can actually the... see the sea at certain points as yeah. well as we came over. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very nice. We've just come through, just um, using our access, got on into Cleve Abbey now. Um, come through the wonderful gift shop, met the, the, the very welcoming and lovely staff. Um, and here we go. Let's start our adventure, start the exploration. Ooh, some of the original bread ovens here. Absolutely beautiful. So these are part of the later uh, medieval Masonic kitchen. And down here was the main room. Oh, wonderful. One of the really interesting things about this abbey is just the amount of tiles and wall decorations that remained. Um, this is because it was so tucked out of the way and wasn't sort of pulled apart the way other abbeys were uh, during the dissolution of the church. So lots of the original decorative tiles and um, heraldry tiles as well um, still remain because they weren't taken away, they weren't sm smashed up and uh, used elsewhere for other buildings or just for the sake of the fact that obviously the monasteries were being pulled down the religion itself was being destroyed from the outside. People tried to sort of ruin everything, including the beautiful decorations, these handmade tiles. You know, it was a show of their brilliance, of the monks' brilliance. So after the dissolution of the monastery, it became lived in as like a, a, a home, a, a great big uh, manor house type home. That in some ways that led to keeping a lot of the um, old um, existing fireplaces and floors and things. It also helped with keeping the uh, unusual structures in this monastery where they were. Obviously, it's been a huge amount of restoration. Great restoration as well, because the, the, these 
rooms have a really lovely feel about them, don't they? So in here, it does feel medieval. Yeah, the beam, all the timber yeah. beams, the big fireplaces. And the smell is oaky, isn't it? Can you smell yeah. that oaky smell? Yeah, got the stone mullions that pissed up the windows here. Yeah, look at that. So they're all stone. Actually, no, I lied. Oh, Sorry. Are they, they wood? They're timber. Mm. So all the timber framed windows and the, the ironwork and everything. 15th, 16th. Yeah. It's really inviting as well as you come in. There's all sorts of little paths, corridors, staircases. I think we have to double back and upstairs before we take you outside there. Interesting. Exciting. Now, oh, also, so these ovens here would have been the additional ovens. Um, Probably a little oven in there, Kevin. I know. I was hoping they'd have a bit of bread on the go. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, um, we. Get out of the oven, Kerry. No. Come on. Got a bun in the oven. <laughs> God's sake. He thinks it's Hansel and Gretel, doesn't he? Ooh. Should we go in? Don't know what I was expecting to find in here, but thank you for coming with me. Come on, Kerry, I need to go upstairs, upstairs. Back through here. Oh, what was in. What's in there, then? We'll go down there first, shall we? Oh, this must be just an education room. This must be where they do tours and lectures on, right. you know, the history and everything. Stamping station. Yeah. Medieval <laughs> tiles. That's as bit as you mentioned about the tiles and things. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think this is for kiddies, isn't it? Yeah. So it's next to the thing, isn't it? It's I love it. Yeah. Look at this fireplace. Yeah, Incredible. Some, some of the ornate. Look at the stonework, Kerry. Beautiful, isn't it? So we're just going to head upstairs now, see what's gone on up here. Straight up here for a second. Wow. So obviously because of the reflection in the, in the glass, it won't pick it up very well. Some of these are amazing, these are 15th century. But it's got the royal coat of arms, chiselled so delicately into this stone. She's all sandstone, I think, and limestone. Very interesting. So this is an angel holding a shield. You can just see the fingertips of three lions, and they believe this was um, referring to Thomas de Brotherton, which was the second surviving son of Edward I, our Edward. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Some more stonework here. Shows some of the designs. I know it won't pick it up particularly well some of the beautiful designs on and they're fantastic they're like leaping um deer and uh, little i presume lions very british to have lions on everything practically oh beautiful just Mold. different materials yeah exactly mold stamp fill yeah and then there's the end yeah, of the here. fantastic that's cool isn't it it's back down here now So this area, this whole area around here, this is going to be the farmhouse range. These are part of the actual giant farmhouse. So after the dissolution of the church, uh, the monastery itself became a giant sort of country estate with farmhouses and places to sort of entertain. Quite the property to have and in a really nice position as well. You have the water running alongside. Here they have stone windows, Kerry, so. Stone mullions, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for me. Yeah. So I'm going to go up here now. Oh. It's still part of the later farmhouse. Oh, wow. So this is the upper chamber. Absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Wow, look at those timbers. So it's believed because the the woodwork is so good and the windows are so ornate, they believe that this was the room for the abbot. So again, this is the 15th century part of the um, monastery. 
So we sort of keep going through the centuries, I'm afraid. That's just how it is in places like this. Because obviously, um, in Britain, there was a lot of turmoil with the church. Lots of things kept changing. Um, and favours kept coming in and out. So sometimes monasteries would be extremely rich. to have a lot of money. You'd see a lot of building going on. And then suddenly, they would lose all their money. Their fortunes fell badly. They would have to do little bits. And then you would get this. We were, this was obviously a boom year. Because yeah. um, it's 15th century. And it is beautiful. It must have cost an absolute fortune. So back down these stairs. I'm presuming these stairs are probably in place of the originals. Yes. They feel like it, don't they? The abbot's room that was above us a moment ago, this is what was below it. Again, it would be 15th century, just as the abbot's room was above us. Oh! Wow, painted. Oh, so here you go. There's still art on the wall and the hand painted chamber in there. Look, beautiful. So there's a richly dressed man there, look quite ornate probably someone of authority and the lion is meant to represent St. Catherine and the dragon at the uh, right hand side is meant to actually depict St. Margaret. Where all this was painted on the walls that would tell you it was an important room. They weren't very decorative people as such so this would tell you that this was a room of great importance probably for the abbot um, for some reason so maybe his um, sort of study or something similar where he might meet dignitaries and so they wanted to obviously to make it look as plush as possible and to show off a little bit as well show off their skills their art skills oh wonderful so there's some actually on the wall here now um someone was telling us before that it was quite usual that during the dissolution of the monastery monks would actually leave parts of graffiti and it was a sign of their um, devotion, their everlasting devotion, and they didn't uh, agree with the breaking up and the dissolution of the church. And actually, here it looks like a little monk has done a self portrait. Look at that. Look at that, Kerry. Kerry, is that you? Oh, no. oh my goodness. There is a, there is a likeness. Some more medieval monk graffiti. This time of flower, look at flowers. Interesting, isn't it? The reason that this abbey stands so nicely still, um, with all these beautiful buildings still mostly intact, obviously lots of added in um, fireplaces and stuff, because obviously all these fireplaces would have um, not existed for the monks. They had probably one fire amongst the whole area and maybe one in their dorm. This area was all taken over. So what it was, is during the dissolution of the monastery, um, a friend of Henry VIII's, he sort of tricked the armies that were going up to fight in the north. Um, and when he did that, he got the army to disband, pretty much. Um, and because of that, Henry VIII was so chuffed that he gave him this whole place. And that's why it wasn't so destroyed, because normally all of the religious symbols, all of that beautiful um, paintwork, all of the wonderful intricate works um, to show Catholicism all the way around this beautiful abbey, this huge monastery, would have been destroyed. They would have um, torn it down, destroyed it. Um, they did burn all the books, unfortunately, in the Great Library, but um, it would have been a complete ruin. But they stopped because obviously Henry VIII's mate had the place itself. So they went, oh, don't destroy any more of that. So that's why, that's why we get to uh, see this place, even if it was through vicious treachery. Uh, under this concrete floor is beautiful woodwork. It is uh, proper floorboards all the way through. During the 50s, this area, in the 1950s, this area was uh, owned by the council. And unfortunately, Thing that people like to do in the 50s was slather concrete everywhere but it still exists underneath here and we will take you to see the old refractory in a minute and interestingly as well so carved up there just on here I know it's difficult to see but there's a bit of a better picture of it here look is a green man 
little face of a green man. And this was, well, 15th century, I should say, green man. Um, and this was something quite normal. This is found in a lot of churches and stuff in Britain. And although it's a pagan symbol, you do find it in a lot of um, Christian churches. It's probably because the carpenter doing the work um, just either got a little bit bored or was having a little bit of fun or was a pagan. Yeah. Also that, that example up there as well where they slatted off and slatted over, that's yeah. how they would have finished it. And they would have painted the night sky onto that. Yeah. But I believe they ran out of money. So in the 50s, again, during the 1950s, they wanted to show people how they would have finished the actual um, roof that would have been all slatted over and then painted by the night sky, as Kerry says. But yes, they didn't finish it, did they, Kerry? No. No longer. <laughs> Board. All this waiting just makes me want to do a little bit of. Ah, oh, somebody's beat me to it. <laughs> so, this little area is really interesting because it's just off the refectory here. Um, the new refectory, I should say. And this is where you would wait to see the abbot. Now, often monks had such a long wait to see the abbot that they started uh, getting a bit bored sitting down here and would do a little bit of doodling. And this is the old graffiti from boredom, sheer boredom. <laughs> I love that. I love the fact that like school kids have got yeah. really bored <laughs> waiting. So this was the door to wait at. Oh, I almost knocked and got scared. Oh, some more examples of the tiles here. So this is the lava, and here would have been a great big uh, metal uh, trough, and it would have had water piped into it, and the monks would wash here before having a meal in the refractory. Wash your hands, Kerry, come on. Good washing. Good. I have some biscuits now. <laughs> no biscuits. They didn't have biscuits, they had bread. And here, that is quite a rich man. Um, and he wanted to be there as a penance so people would walk over him but technically this so this stairway never actually existed to a refectory the new refectory that actually went straight through to the old one with that beautiful floor and this was the way up to the abbot's quarters straight up this stairwell here but obviously this has been altered during the 15th century this was all altered um, and the stairwell put in So when this was a farmhouse, they almost used this as a barn. But this is actually the old refractory where everyone ate. And they would get, what was it, a pound of bread and vegetables and watered down beer, which they call short beer. This is where the abbot would stand. There's a little stairwell here. And the abbot would stand and he would do his prayers during their meals. And of course he was the only one that would speak. Hello, welcome to... Now he spoke in Latin, Kerry, ancient Latin. Tibus, 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 Ala, Aliactos, Piscitio. So Kerry only knows Latin from horror movies? <laughs> Good. Um, that is an addition. Monks themselves wouldn't have had um, big fireplaces. That's just not a thing. It's cool, isn't it? So yes, when this was a farmhouse, um, they decided to use this as like a storage for barrels and stuff. This whole area was just completely full of barrels. So here, this is where the cloister was. Look at this, very interesting, very beautiful. All gone now, unfortunately. This is a slightly later add-on and they know this because the windows have slats here. See this? They have slats. Now that means that they would have had glass, which of course was much later on. So um, this is all an add-on. So this is all the original. And then the abbot would have walked through here 
at the top of the cloister. So the cloister was here, and then the abbot would have walked through there straight into the church. So he didn't get wet. Didn't like getting wet, did he? <laughs> Is it hidden emoji? <gasps> So just hold your camera central here a minute. Come on, come on in here. Yeah. And just see if you can spot the emoji. Is there an actual emoji? Yeah, yeah. Give you a second. Is it spot that one? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> cat, cat spider. What is he? Why? He's a little happy face. So the stonemason must have been a cheeky little chappy. <laughs> just wanted to leave his mark here or uh, test uh, how alert people were passing through. That's interesting, isn't it? With a little happy smiling face emoji. Cheeky swine. Wattle daub. Daub. Yeah, it's wattle and daub. So it's just, it's like our, it's the old fashioned way of plastering. Yeah. You add that and it would stick to that. It would sort of be mud and hair and um, horse hair, wasn't it? Horse hair, mud. Yeah, that's it. Straw. Uh, straw and um, feathers. And then, yeah, they would just stick it all, glue it all together. And a lot of all the stonework and everything we're walking through would all been locally sourced as well. Yeah, everything would be, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's very beautiful. It is. And it was so advanced. Yeah. So, so Head of their really times. Advanced. Have I taken you into the Great Library yet? I don't know. Have we been to the Great well, Library? Well, I've been in, but I don't know if you went in. So but let's just show the Great Library. Let's go and have a look in the Great the Library. The Great Library is interesting because they didn't just have books in like cupboards. Yeah. They had books all the way around, which was a bit weird at the time. This is the library. Unfortunately, all the books would have been burnt during the uh, dissolution of the monasteries, which is a real shame because they were all handwritten, yeah. hand illustrated, absolutely beautiful, and they would have been extraordinarily expensive. Yeah, you'd have to be one of the richest people to be able to have, even to have one of these books. Yeah, they would have all been destroyed. It's quite a small room in comparison to everything else well, we've no, seen. Not really. Because think about the energy in the, in the 13th century, yeah. think about the energy that would have had to go into this room. And also, it looks a bit plain now, but actually they would have had, the, the whole room would have been plastered and painted and it would have probably had decoration of sorts because it would have been quite special. And I know these sacraments would have been able to look after the books. So it would, they obviously were of huge importance to them. So, but look at it. But that would, this would have been all plastered and white. So the whole place would have been uh, whitewashed. Which, if you think about the fact that people were living in both mud and wood houses everywhere else, yeah. when you think about it, to Pretty lend that much time to, and don't forget there wasn't many books, they were all handwritten, there was only a few books. Yeah. This would have been huge. It would have been seen as a great library. This mammoth, it's huge, isn't it? you could freely speak to the monks. Um, it's a really interesting room. It's actually reduced quite severely in the 15th century. This would have been much larger. But it's a really interesting room because it still has these beautiful symbols up on the ceiling, which are believed to be witch marks, which is something that often was put into places to show faith after the dissolution, which is something that it was uh, used in quite a few different places to show spirituality. So, but they're very interesting, they're still in the, the ceilings. So the parlour here, this is the office of the prior. Now, these monks were actually silent, so he was able to speak to the monks himself in here, and they just had to nod. When this was a farmyard, these buildings were all used for pigs, for cattle. We go in there now. So this area was the lodging chambers. So it was for the more um, well-to-do, and they would actually pay about £24 back in the day, which is a lot of money, to stay here. And they had their own toilet and heating. Um, they'd have all their meals made for them. They could even have their horse stabled. And they'd have lots of people praying for them, which means they went ascended straight to heaven, and no pur purgatory for them. But they had to pay their way to do that, quite a lot of money. 
Um, but yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? And yeah. it's quite posh, actually. Well, there's a little bit of a picture of one here. It's a little bit dark, but you can just about see. And that's really quite fancy for a place like this. A proper bed and a fireplace and your own toilet, which is very unusual. Can we show on the shutters? So that's all they had, you know, before glass. Yeah. That's what they used, that or just literally strips of cloth. Cold, isn't it? I get cold just thinking about that. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, here's the lab. So this is the lavatory look. There. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I need to go. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> nice little toilet view there. Have a little peek, see who's out in the garden. <laughs> this was more bedrooms, yeah. And en suite, so we had an en suite toilet. It's so interesting, isn't it? It's really cool. All little shuttered windows, look. Ooh, that's dark. It's a bit dark in this bed, isn't it? It's quite dark. Bedroom. Oh yes, look at that. We'll take you through that way in a little bit, but yes. we've got more to show you first, so please stay tuned. So this corridor is called a slipe, and they're always called that. Um, and nobody actually knows why, but they always connect the cloister to the infirmary. I don't know what the reason for it is. So this was the dry room and uh, it's got beautiful light in here. And this is where they illuminate books. So you know in a lot of films and stuff, you see them bent over copying manuscripts and um, doodling, making them beautiful, illuminating them. Uh, this is where they did it. And it's because it had beautiful light in here. And it is actually one of the brightest rooms um, I've seen so far walking around, so it's very wise. And look at the size of the windows. Uh, a sharp contrast to the windows you saw earlier in the um, dorms, which obviously they tried to keep very small because it was so incredibly cold otherwise. And also because this was the room that most sort of sat down work would be carried out, um, they did actually have a good sized fireplace. You can see here, it's the dead giveaway, this sort of herringbone um, slats give away to your fireplace um, yeah and they used that to keep them warm in the winter they only used it during the winter though which I think it's cold in here all the time Ooh. so the, this area outside here Nice, that's back into the drying room there and that's the slope and this was the chapter house straight into the cloister Kerry's there talking to a nice guide there <laughs> and what was interesting about the chapter house is that this is where you would get told what your daily um, jobs were going to be your tasks and if um, the abbot thought done something uh, that he didn't appreciate he'd have you lie down here in the doorway and you'd have every single monk walk over your body don't get on the wrong side of the abbot please and even in here you can see little ornate paintings look look at that can you see that let me lift you up oh, look at that I mean, you, you honestly, genuinely, rarely get to see things like that. They were, it was all just wiped out, destroyed, hidden. Once uh, Catholicism had come under the, the brute, had come under the heel of Henry VIII. And it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it talks about the detail here. The decoration chapter house, that would have been easier to show you, wouldn't it? And this shows the abbot here, 13th century chapter house. And it shows the abbot talking to the monks. He's just telling them their jobs. Abbot always spoke in Latin. 
So the lay people who lived in the area did not speak Latin. So they couldn't really join in on much. So sometimes if they were here, which is the church, and it's a massive church, wow, it's huge. The lay people did join in um, as little as they could. They would sit and they would watch the abbot um, go through his prayers, etc. But he spoke in Latin and they did not speak Latin. Um, they were also completely illiterate, so they didn't have a lot to do, so they'd get very bored. This is the sacristy Oops. <laughs> room. Extremely important room, so this would be have all of the very sacred items in, in it um, and riches. This have all the sacred items in it. It's a very beautiful room. And just over there on the floor is once again the symbol of the Clare family. You can just about make out that sort of chevron shape. This floor is very beautiful, isn't it? We are not allowed in this room because obviously it still has that beautiful floor completely intact and of course that would actually be part of the church which is all out here this is all the church completely destroyed now unfortunately totally ruined uh, it's got a bit of a strange history and a strange secret here and that is that just here what would have been under a beautiful tiled church floor is a baby the body of a baby um, which is very unusual. The only babies to be buried in churches were usually only ever royal children. You would never normally have a, uh, um, any other child buried inside a church. Um, and it was very strange because normally royal children were only buried within coffins, uh, ornate coffins usually. Uh, but this baby was just buried within a shroud. So they're not sure whose child that was. There are some ideas that perhaps it was a friend of the abbot or something similar, um, but very unusual because they would have had to dig up the floor to do that, which would be, I mean, these tiles cost an absolute fortune. But now this is the actual inside of the church floor. A little bit of it still remains, look. So beautiful. It really is. I'd love my floor like that now. Yeah. I and you see that little mound there, Kerry? Yeah. That mound is where the market cross was because okay. to make money, they always had to make money. These places were quite expensive. So in between the church and the gatehouse is this lovely piece of land here. And it's seen as the inner courtyard. Here would have been a bake house, um, a brewing house, barns, stables. They're very busy people. Lots of uh, livery work and selling and gardening and obviously brewing. God, they brewed. Did they love alcohol? They loved it. So, and this part here is where the tower was. This is the great tower here, just outside the dormitories. Uh, completely destroyed now. While somebody was doing a bit of treasure hunting, apparently. Digging out too deep. They dug it out too deep and it just collapsed, apparently. Um, that's as the story goes. And that's where they would have kept all their riches. So yeah. all the money. Because obviously you had to go through the dormitories. That's that massive door up here you would have been forced to go through the dormitories, past all the monks, um, to get to the money. The church was set out quite in a textbook manner. Obviously the choir here, the nave at the far back with the vaulted ceilings normally. Uh, the chapels, you always had small chapels in these churches. There was two chapels there. Uh, the transect over there, quite normal. It was actually very textbook, a textbook church really. Quite a good size though, I think. Yep, so choir all the way up here. Do, 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 lots of singing. Lads sat here doing some singing. And then oh. <laughs> obviously the nave and this spot here. Apparently once uh, laid the tomb of the abbot. Of one of the abbots, I should say. These are the day stairs to the original dormitory. Beautiful oak doors here. And a strange little circle cut out of the door itself. And insanely, that was for the local cat. <laughs> it is the first ever cat flap. And that's not a joke, that's absolutely true. 
Wow, oh my goodness. Beautiful. Oh, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This would have been the dormitory for 28 months. So this sort of shows the open style dormitories and what they believed by the 16th century actually looked like. So sort of cut off little areas, each with their own style and personality. I believe that would have been around the 16th century that happened, which is obviously just before the, the breaking up of the monasteries. I love it. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, in such good condition. Wow. It is the best um, condition for a monastery in the whole of Britain. So this is an interesting spot because in this corner, the reason it's at a funny angle is because they would put a lantern here and that would help light up this part of the room and down towards the latrines so people didn't sort of uh, come a cropper when they needed a loo in the middle of the night. And that was the latrines down there. And it got washed away. You can see where the, the water would run to wash away dookies. The, the monkey dookies, the monks dookies. So these went on the top of graves and it would have been very important people, probably abbots or maybe dignitaries and things. Um, but unfortunately we don't know because the Victorians did this, which they love doing. Pesky Victorians. Yeah, they love doing this sort of thing, but they didn't write down where they retrieved them from. So no one's too sure because if they weren't in certain spots, then yeah. they wouldn't have been an abbot. They may have been like a, um, a royal or someone, one of the landowners or someone who had paid to, you know, be very godly. So 28 monks here, 28 main monks, and obviously laymen were here, which um, weren't monks, but they did all the sort of, um, they did a lot of work for the monks themselves. They were like unpaid um, servants really, but they did get food and board and it was better than um, a lot of the lives that they would have lived. Each window has a bit of um, a personality to it. They've realized now that it's probable that each uh, window was a dorm. You know, so a little area with a bed, and, rather than an open dormitory, which is obviously what we normally think of. But each one has a bit of personality, so it's sort of been altered to how a person would like it, decorated if you like. And that is more obvious over here. You can see in the windows here, where they're, they're, they've, they've tiled their own individual little nooks. And there would have been one fire for the whole place, by the way. And this is a huge room, it's been extremely cold. Now that's a bit of decoration, isn't it? Beautiful hand-stamped tiles. Absolutely gorgeous. Everyone had their own personality, obviously, Kerry, didn't they? You don't get that in Ikea. Wonderful. So, these two doors over here. This led to the night stairway, and this is to the tower. Obviously, it doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. The tower itself. And the night stairs would have been for access for night services and things, so that we would just... I love them because they go out and attend night services without disturbing everybody. Yes, that's why there was a day um, stairwell and a night stairwell. So as we make our way down the day staircase from the dormitory, we've got these amazing old oak doors, absolutely lush. On this side, they did some doodling and they decided to draw boats. Look at that. Isn't that cool? This area, I think I showed you it from the top actually earlier, uh, is the latrines and it was a shared latrine. And uh, strangely, and not, this isn't even a joke, they actually called it the necessitarium, which I actually prefer. So I'm gonna call it that from now on. I'll be like, miss, I need the necessitarium. Bring it back, bring back the necessitarium. You couldn't see actually where the water would have flowed through. Look, there's like um, almost pipe working um via obviously just via dugouts carry where the water would have flown come through obviously always having to keep it under cover or else it just would have got filled full of rubbish so inside this very modern building kept for the preservation of this beautiful floor so luckily this had been covered over so when uh, this had been taken over by richard uh, he had this covered and that's very lucky, really, because that kept this preserved, or else it probably would have been destroyed. How beautiful it is. So all of these different um, markings, they all represent um, rich families that would have uh, given money to this uh, monastery. So 
So uh, look at these beautiful, absolutely gorgeous hand stamped tiles. These would have all been done in the Gloucestershire area, most likely, but these little ones, there are evidence that these smaller tiles in between these more sort of finely decorated tiles were actually created um, just at the other side of the gatehouse that we saw earlier. The three lions obviously represent the King of England. The chevrons represent de Clare, Earls of Gloucester. The rampant lion denotes the Earls of Cornwall and the two-headed eagle indicates Richard, which was the King of the Romans, who actually never fulfilled his wish. He never did become the King of the Romans. The lions are not lions at all. In fact, whoever created them, unfortunately, used leopards. You can see there's actually stripes on the lions. Just going to stop for a cup of tea, but we've just been told that this little area here, which is a bit barren now, is probably where the layman's refectory was, which is where they all ate, obviously. Um, but it probably would have been um, a wooden building. They probably wouldn't have bothered building um, a stone building for the layman. Um, so unfortunately there's nothing of it left now, but they do believe it was here in this sort of barren area. Yeah. So there's lots of lovely benches and things dotted around this wonderful abbey. Yeah, lush. And we've just parked ourselves under the, the shade of this tree um, for a cup of tea, some biscuits, and sit back and, and enjoy the views. Different views today. Proper little time machine sat in front of us this morning, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. 13th century. Big building at the side, 13th. At the top, 15th. At the side over there, 18th. Can you believe it? Crazy. Cheers. Cheers, chin, chin, chin. Oh, I love it here. It's really cool. Really cool. So this little area, you can just see there's actually a bit of stonework there in between. Um, not like what is taken back by the natural sort of riverbank, but it's um, it's actually a leet. Okay. So this is one of the leets that were created around the whole of the to help service abbey. and and it was to help drain off the land because they'd li lifted the land so much as to, to drain off the land and service the actual abbey itself. Obviously, the animals, the people flushing Habitation, out the latrines. Yeah. yeah, it was really important to always have uh, water flushing through, and also they had a brew house, which would have needed a lot of water. So it's just quite important, but yes, it's an actual leet. So this is quite an unusual gatehouse due to the depiction of Jesus up there with the thorns. Quite unusual, and it's even stranger that it still exists because normally those symbols would have been just desecrated within days of um, the orders by Henry VIII. Those sort of symbols were the first to go. So this is the Almory we were talking about. And strangely, I never knew this because I always thought it was an acronym. The word doll for the, you know, meaning to have welfare, to claim welfare. I always thought that was an acronym. Apparently it's from this. So this was the area that the poor would come into and be given food. The monks would give food for free and they would have to come every day and be fed. And this is uh, doling out. So this is where they, they doled the food. So to be on the dole was to claim food or take food for free. Um, and that's where that came from, the idea of being on the dole as welfare, which I never knew. I genuinely always thought it was just an acronym. Learn something every day, didn't you, Kerry? You do learn something every day. Every day's a school day, isn't it, Kerry? It is, it is. The monks are amazing because they fed so many poor people. Um, and once, and unfortunately, once places like these were closed down and uh, monks had to move away from these areas, um, very poor people, which most people were hideously poor. Um, unfortunately, if you begged, if you begged once and got caught, you'd have your ear cut off. Begged twice the other ear, three times you'd be killed. But of course, if you're starving, um, and you are a vagrant, begging is literally the only way that you could survive. Tens of thousands of people were killed after the dissolution of the monastery uh, for being vagrant. So yes, I mean, places like this, it had a, a relationship between the very poor 
and the church. It was a true relationship that was obviously severed. Thank you so much for joining us here today in Cleve Abbey. Yeah, it's been amazing. I've really enjoyed it. It's so interesting. What a great place. So if you ever are in this area, please come and see it. It's the best preserved abbey in the whole of Britain and it is amazing. You would highly recommend it. Yeah, it was really so, cool. So if you have enjoyed today's video and today's tour, please don't forget to drop us a little like comment down below in the comment section and if you haven't already please subscribe Boop. and hit that bell notification Bing bong. helps encourage us to get out and share our adventures Do with it. you and we really appreciate please. it thank you so thank you very much until our next adventure stay safe and well I keep enjoying those green spaces take care bye everyone bye.